Welcome to Hell's Kitchen Chefs. Season 23. The new season of Hell's Kitchen is here and it looks promising. This is Hell's Kitchen, head chefs only. This is a dream come true. Who would have thought? Yes. Meanwhile, today, I'll be going over the worst chefs from seasons one to five. So let's get started with season one. I'm Wendy from Milburn, New Jersey. I think Gordon's gonna love the fact that I'm a perfectionist. With fine dining, it's all about the details. Yes, Wendy Lou it is. She had no personality in my opinion. It was annoying how she claimed on multiple occasions that she is a perfectionist, only to frequently put up substandard food. Like when Wendy sent up her plate in the squid cleaning challenge, thinking Chef Ramsay would be impressed by her perfectionism. Big tear at the bottom. Feels very full. Bad one. But she didn't score any points. When she said she couldn't get the skin off one squid in time, Chef Ramsay called her out for shifting the blame. Forgot to take the skin off the inside. That's very lazy. That one I stopped because the hole. That one you stopped. Now you're blaming the squid. Her team ended up losing five to six, and their punishment was a bit of a squid showdown. They had to clean all the squids for the next dinner service and had to endure a sweltering service without any air conditioning. Back in the dorms, Andrew felt he had let his team down. She reassured him that she hadn't scored either. You guys think I let yeah. you down? You know what? I didn't turn anything out either. Mine was clean on the inside, I'm telling you. Carolina next to her because she got Yeah, and, and my hole was like minuscule. When Ralph asked for the Chinese translation of We Will Never Lose Again, she pronounced it back. Which means we will not lose again. Now, Ralph hoped it would become the blue team's rallying cry, getting his teammates to repeat it. But can that be our battle cry for the day? Woman puts I sue! 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 During prep, Wendy struggled to get her station in order. Perfectionist Wendy is trying to find her way. I'm worried about organizing everything else because once the order comes in, I gotta cook it. The narrator called her out too. During the second dinner service, she was stationed at the appetizer section. Wendy, yes, how long chef. for two bloody risotto? Coming up right now, chef. Thank you, hallelujah. When she brought her first risotto to the hot plate, Chef Ramsay told her the rice was undercooked and sent her back to the start. This is turning out to be a bit of a joke. Another five minutes, Chef. I'm sorry, I had to start from scratch. It's a, it's a second table, sweetheart. Come on. During the third dinner service, Wendy started at the appetizer station again. At one point, she used cold water to cook the spaghetti. Why is the spaghetti not in there yet? The water's not at a rolling boil. The water's not boiling. Did you top it up with cold water? Yes, she did, and listened to her reasoning. Yes, Chef. Why did you put cold water in there? I thought cold water was supposed to boil faster than hot water. What? This is one of HK's most hilarious moments. When her lobster spaghetti reached the critics, Melissa Clark was left unimpressed. First up is Wendy's lobster spaghetti. Here you kind of taste like chewy lobster and then tomatoes and it doesn't come together. Then, moving to the meat station, Wendy lost track of time, giving Chef Ramsay 10 minutes to cook her lamb. Ralph stepped in, cutting it down to five minutes, which Chef Ramsay appreciated. Yes, Chef. How long? 10 minutes, Chef. 10 minutes? Chef, can you call the ticket again, please? One lamb, one salmon. How long? Five minutes, Chef. Yeah, fucking right, five minutes. Let's go. Kind of cute how Ralph swooped in, gently placed his hand on Wendy to assure that he's got it. Now, since Wendy didn't eat meat, she needed Ralph's help with the cooking. Just tell me what you need me to do. I'll just do exactly what you tell okay, me. Okay, we got I don't eat meat, so I don't cook it. And so I just was completely lost. Her lamb made it to the critics' table, but got mixed reviews. Kate Crater found it overcooked, while Clark preferred the medium rare version. But you won't believe what happened next. I want it boiling the sauce, yes? I saw it bubbling, I'm sorry. I saw it bubbling, so it's me this time. No, yeah, no, no, no. Struggling to heat her sauce, Chef Ramsay told her her excuses were pathetic and gave her an ultimatum. Everything I tell you, you come back with the most pathetic answers. Yes, Chef. I've always got something to say, button it! You've now pushed me to the limit. I suggest you shut your mouth. Last chance! Wendy was Ralph's first pick for elimination, with Andrew being the second. When it was her turn to plead, she admitted her performance had been awful, but asked for another shot. I know I did a terrible job this evening, and if I am given the opportunity to continue, I would greatly appreciate it. Ultimately, she was eliminated due to her poor performance across all three services. But Chef Ramsay wasn't done yet. It's painful working with you, you know that? Very painful. In her exit interview, Wendy acknowledged it had been a terrible night where nothing went right. She felt she had let everyone down and was disappointed she couldn't advance further in the competition. But Chef Ramsay was unsparing even in his concluding remarks. Wendy, well, 
you know, it's about time I put you out of your misery. Season 1 also featured the sorest loser ever. Believe it or not, Jeff had to bow out because of an ankle injury. In the third episode, he was working at the appetizer station. He sent out two lobster spaghetti dishes, one was short on lobster, and the other had way too much. Hey, Ivan, how can we have two spaghetti on the same table? One plate has got no lobster in it, the other one's rammed with lobster. Work that one out, Jeff. That's when Michael jumped in to help remake the dish. Jeff was just a liability for the team. I can too much for somebody who's never been on a fucking line before. Jeff, do you want him to cook your meat for you, too? What do you want me to do? I've never been on a fucking line before. He blamed his lack of experience on the line for the mishap, which sparked tension with sous chef Marianne and Chris. What do you want me to do? I've never been on a fucking line before. I'm doing it. I'm trying. Are Jeff. you fucking talking to me right Jeff. now? Are you? What is going on? You know, things are bad when Chef Ramsay had to play the referee. Nothing. Okay. Stop shouting. What are we waiting on? I'm working on that uh, spaghetti right, right now. Move your ass and get it done. Later, when he asked Chef Ramsay for five minutes to prepare the lamb dish, Chef Ramsay corrected him, annoyed, saying he had asked for four minutes originally. He scolded Jeff for not following instructions and causing a delay in service. He accused Jeff of working based on his own impulses and instructed him to pick up the pace. Well, in much more gentler words. Look at them out there. Look at those tickets. I understand, Chef. Move yours! In another conversation, Chef Ramsay questioned whether Jeff was running his station or if Michael was essentially running it for him. Chef Ramsay then pointed out Jeff's deteriorating performance as the competition went on. The longer you're here, the worse you're getting. Chef, this is my first time on a line. As if that excuse was gonna fly. And Chef Ramsay pulled him aside to talk about his attitude, giving him some advice for stalling the kitchen. Well, your fucking timing, you jumped up the fucker, has just stuffed the dining room with 30 customers not eating. Now fuck off back on your section. After their little chat, Jeff confided in Chris that he was at his breaking point. Chris tried to persuade him to stay, and he changed his mind. Now comes the coldest Chef Ramsay insult. No. I'm going to finish out service. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. Hey, you're not a fucking cook either. Ouch. He began muttering under his breath. Okay. You're an asshole. Yeah, unfortunately for Jeff, sous chef Marianne overheard his comment and brought it to Chef Ramsay's attention. What was that? What did you just say? What are you I want you to say it louder. I want you to say it louder, Chef. Yep, he walked out. Didn't he just say the opposite a moment ago? Hey, then you're gonna run. No. No. I'm gonna finish out service. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You know. As John Douglas, a former producer of the show, revealed, here's what went down behind the scenes. Get ready, because it's both funny and startling. After his exit, Jeff sought out Chef Ramsay to discuss how he felt he'd been treated. Jeff, visibly upset, approached Chef Ramsay aggressively. Chef Ramsay was taken aback and turned around, causing Jeff to step back suddenly. And then. Oops! Jeff twisted both of his ankles and let out a loud yell. News is, his ankles were fine, but his ego suffered a massive bruising. Well, ain't that true? For season two, it's Mary Bell Miller. It was just chaotic. One more, one more time. Oh my god almighty. Oh boy, she was a disaster. Right now, that's what I suggest you do. Buy a restaurant and put one table in there. Any more than that, you'd be fucked. Yeah, sure. In the signature dish challenge, Maribel stepped up as the fifth contestant to have her dish evaluated by Chef Ramsay. She offered up her Argentine plantain soup, which Chef Ramsay didn't take kindly to. In fact, he spat it out. I'm so sorry. But, well, that wasn't the end of her torment. Maribel felt embarrassed, but brushed it off by thinking Chef Ramsay couldn't handle the spices. During the perfect steak cut challenge, Maribel was the last one from the red team to have her cuts judged. But guess what? She managed to get only two approved. Holy fuck. Only two of Maribel's steaks pass Chef Ramsay's high standards. And then, in the relay challenge, she was the third member of her team to take a turn. When her first 15-second relay started, Rachel forgot to mention the third dish was tortellini. With no option left, Maribel only worked on the chicken and salmon. Although she tried to figure out the third dish on her own, she couldn't. Something's burning, Maribel. Yes, sir. I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, I don't know what that third thing is. And I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm looking through the ovens, and I look everywhere. And switch! Sometime later, during the final relay, she also forgot to tell Sarah that the third entree was tortellini. Look, Lisa, there. What is that? Stop. Pop like play. Maribel, move, Sarah. Maribel went like this. <laughs> After seeing the blue team present three dishes compared to their two, it wasn't hard to see that she felt terrible for missing the third item. That's the only thing that was running through my head how badly I screwed up, and why didn't I listen? 
because I didn't hear what the third item was, and I was like, we're gonna lose. During the third dinner service, Maribel was assigned to the meat station. Two hours in, the red team had sent out a good number of entrees, with Lamb Wellingtons being the crowd favorite. This put her under extra pressure. When she announced having only six Wellingtons ready while eight were needed, Heather wasn't pleased. She had to explain the situation to Chef Ramsay, who suggested making more from scratch. Move your ass, Maribel, yes? We're doing fresh. Fucking useless. I love you too, man. Love you too. Jean-Philippe then informed Chef Ramsay that one of the red tables was on the verge of leaving. Chef Ramsay conveyed this to the women, and she said she needed seven minutes, to which the table hesitantly agreed. She then sent up Wellingtons that were undercooked when they were supposed to be rare, prompting Chef Ramsay to send them back to the oven. It's cold. It's stone cold. It's stone cold. Yeah, sure. Rare is not stone cold, is it? Not we know sure. it's not piping hot, but that is refrigerated stone cold. After enduring several rounds of yelling, she began to tune Chef Ramsay out while the table grew increasingly impatient. I'm listening to him, but sometimes I just hear like, you know, wah, 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 wah. Eventually, a lady from the nearly walking out table came to the kitchen, but she wasn't about to let her get upset. She assured them her Wellington would be ready in 45 seconds, starting a countdown. Uh, unfortunately, the Wellingtons she brought out were still undercooked. And what do you think the customers did? Well, of course they left. Yeah. It's rare! Oh, come on! It's the only tab we'll be doing, Mirabelle! Christ almighty! Sadly, Chef Ramsay was quick to notice this. And nope, he wasn't about to let it slide. In his very next breath, he accused her of giving up and not caring. You've given up so fucking easily. But he wasn't done yet. The next thing you know, he decided to shut down both kitchens. Shit! Switch everything off, yeah? During the next dinner service, Maribel was manning the garnish station. Just as the red team was about to finish their first round of entrees, her mashed potatoes ended up overcooked, and it was a sticky mess. Do you know what? If that was the last thing in this country to eat, I'd fucking starve. But her performance continued to hit a new low with every service. In the fifth service, her plate of foie gras came back for having hair on it, which reflected badly on her quality control. I do, my hair's tied up, that's straight. I have curly hair, oh, thank you very much. Oh, fuck curly hair. During the sixth dinner service, Maribel was handling the garnish station. A lukewarm salmon dish was sent back because of Maribel, prompting Chef Ramsay to express disbelief that the first thing she had a hand in turned out poorly. I believe the first thing you touched this evening in service has come back. Yes, Chef. And, well, that was the last straw for him. Maribel was eliminated that episode, and, well, I'm sure none of us are surprised. I'm trying to find someone that deserves a restaurant. Now, to run that restaurant properly, you need a leader. My Mirabel clearly can't lead a section, let alone a kitchen. But here comes the juicy part. In her exit interview, Maribel admitted that her struggle to fit in with Sarah and Virginia was her downfall. She expressed that her husband and daughter would be proud of her for staying true to herself throughout the competition. Yeah, Sarah and Virginia were just out for themselves. I'm here trying to work as a team. I think that was my weakness. I was myself throughout the process. My husband will see that and he'll be proud of me and my daughter will too. And that's all that counts to me. Well, what can I say but good for you? And now, time for season three, and my pick is Vinny. Vinny stepped up first, presenting his chorizo-encrusted pink snapper served over cucumber salsa. Chef Ramsay had a hard time locating the snapper until Vinny pointed it out. Where in the fuck's the snapper? That's the snapper there. Yes, sir. Chef Ramsay found it overly spicy. Really, seriously, eat all that without burning your mouth? What a disappointment. But Vinny talked back. I don't think so. I... Now you want to fucking argue. Back in line. Chef. And I think he looked at me and said that I, this guy is really confident, and I think that intimidated him. Arguing with Chef Ramsay and HK never ends well unless your name is Tanil Middleton. I can assure Vinny, Ramsay certainly didn't think that. What a fucking jerk. In the blind taste test, he cost the blue team its victory by confusing tuna with, well, check it out yourselves. Pancetta. Pancetta. Yes! Take them off. Go. That's just embarrassing. In the first service, he overcooked the spaghetti. Your pasta is like glue, it's paste. But Vinny's focus was not on the critique. 
He's standing there and he's yelling at you and his wrinkles is all, he, looks, he starts to look like a Sharpay. Try a little bit harder. Yeah, real mature, right? And his steam and his emotions are coming out. This is absolute rubbish. Get in the fucking bin. He was enjoying it. Like, did he have a humiliation kink? But then he uses a word like rubbish. Vinny, is that really funny? You gotta bite your tongue and start to laugh because use a word that I understand. He ran into more problems when he found he needed more vegetable stock for his risotto. Rock broke the news that they had run out. Vinny decided to improvise by adding water, reasoning that since vegetables are mostly water, it should work fine. Chef, I put water in risotto, we don't, we don't have any less stock. Oh, for fuck's sake. And what was Vinny's reasoning? Rock is made of water, and vegetables are made of water. No harm, no foul. Was he trying to mock Chef Ramsay's accent? Next time, just leave the tay out of water. Anyway, Chef Ramsay took a taste and immediately spat it out. It tastes like Nat's piss. <coughs> Stop it! In response, Chef Ramsay demoted Vinny from the appetizer station, assigning him to dishwashing duty for the rest of the night. Hey, get off the section! Brad! Hey, get on there! Get your ass on there! And stay on there! Chef Ramsay took a jab at him, asking him if he was thrilled about scrubbing pots and pans. I'm doing my best, Chef! Vinny's just peaked in life. Fucking dishwasher. But with hungry diners walking out the door, Chef Ramsay had had enough. He shut the place down in frustration, unable to handle the chaos any longer. Come here. Shut it down. Forget it. Service. We're shutting it down. Chef Ramsay brought both teams together and didn't hold back. He turned his attention to Vinny and his disastrous risotto. Vinny tried to defend himself, claiming Chef Ramsay hadn't given him clear instructions. I didn't know what you wanted. You didn't want to show me. So what did you want me to do? Chef Ramsay wasn't buying it. You two-faced, lazy little fucker. That hit a nerve with Vinny, but Rock stepped in to defuse the tension. Lazy. All I could think to myself was, please shut up. Who are you talking to? Are you serious? I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. What? Moving on to the second dinner service. In the blue kitchen, Vinny had been working on the Dover Soul special. Unfortunately, Ramsay noticed it was burnt. Is that burnt, Vinny? I can see it from here, it looks fucking dark. Is that burnt, yes or no? No, chef. It's got a rosy golden brown on. Vinny tried to cover up by saying it was just brown, but he had to send it to the pass for a closer look. Chef Ramsay was unimpressed to find the Dover Soul was indeed burnt. I thought by this stage you'd tell me the truth. I'm telling you, one nicely cooked there, yeah, and one that is cooked to fuck. Yes, Chef. His frustration was clear. Vinny's attempt to downplay the mistake only added to his anger. I've never seen such illiterate fucking cooking in all my life. And then, in the third service, he held back the men by slowing down on the scallops. Where's the other portion of scallops? Right here, Chef, come in, 10 seconds. Come on, come on, Vin. Come on, Vin, they already eat. Where's the other scallop? Right here in my hand. The situation got worse when Chef Ramsay spotted a raw egg on the plate. What is that? Fuck off, will you? Fuck off, okay? Do you think Chef Ramsay went a bit far here? You've now just confirmed in my mind you're not trustworthy, so fuck you. Anyway, in the next service, Vinny got his Wellingtons ready, but told Chef Ramsay he needed an extra 15 minutes since he had overcooked his first batch of four. Everything moving fucking perfectly normal, and then you want 15 more minutes because you fucked. How many did you fuck? I, I fucked uh, four of them, Chef. Vinny didn't exactly keep Chef Ramsay in the loop as expected, but he did manage to get his next batch of Wellingtons up. However, sous chef Scott let Chef Ramsay in on a little secret. Vinny had flash grilled them in the oven and they were still rare. You, look at me. You don't care anymore, you know that. Chef Ramsay was on me tonight. He's Hawkeye. You know, he, he sees, he's, he's Oz. He sees everything. And when Vinny sent out another batch, the pastry was still raw because he hadn't trimmed it properly. Chef Vinny. Yes, Chef. Look at me. Can you trim it properly? Yes, Chef. Yeah, and bring it to the hot plate and cut the pastry with a serrated knife. Donkey. Chef Ramsay blasted him for making the meat entrees inconsistent, while Vinny insisted his latest attempt was spot on. But Chef Ramsay then peeked into the bin and found six Wellingtons and a chicken tossed in there. I kept my own private garbage bin on my station, and uh, I had six Wellington orders and one chicken in my bin. Hey, a restaurant wouldn't even open with that. He was not getting away with it. You, you closed it before you got anywhere. It was a mistake, it's an expensive mistake. When many dishes came back, Chef Ramsay decided it was time to shut down operations. Chef was furious, he dropped the plate, he said, fuck off, shut down, and we were so goddamn close again. Rock picked Josh for nomination, thinking he had outlived his usefulness for the guys. 
Ramsey, though, had other ideas. He wasn't having Rox pick and decided to shake things up by calling Vinny down instead. When Vinny got his turn to plead, he insisted he was the best chef in the bunch and deserved a win. Well, chef, when you decide to put your name behind somebody's name for this hotel in Las Vegas, uh, I'm the most qualified chef here. Chef Ramsey, not one to mince words, told him to tone down the bravado and face up to his mistakes. How about a little bit of humility right now to keep your ass in Hell's Kitchen? Clearly, Vinny didn't get the memo. When will you ever accept that you fucked up? When will you ever accept that you were totally oblivious to cooking at Wellington? He ended up being sent home. Where well, Vinny is, he's a crap cook. In eighth place, Vinny is the highest ranked contestant who never won a single challenge. He is also the first contestant to be eliminated after an overruled nomination from Chef Ramsay. For season four, it's definitely the captain who sang the Titanic. I'd love to say goodnight, but it was a shit night. Ben. Punk. That night's menu had a pretty simple lineup. Fresh pasta, barbecued chicken wings, and some classic hamburgers. Chef Ramsay told Matt to be sure no kid ended up with raw chicken on their plate. Make sure those chicken are fucking cooked, huh? You serve me raw chicken to a child, yeah? Chicken, I'll pick yeah. on your balls. Let's go. Now that's a serious threat. Ben's first batch of onion rings hit the pass, but they were more floppy than crispy. Chef Ramsay made it clear he needed to redo them, and Ben, of course, stood there staring at Chef Ramsay like he had just spoken in Latin. I want a crispy onion ring. Fuck off you, yeah? It was limp. Horrible. You hit it underneath, yes? Chef Ramsay, not in the mood for it, told him to quit staring and get back to work. Ben eventually came through with onion rings that weren't half bad. By the time 45 minutes rolled by, the blue team finally managed to get appetizers to their diners. The onion rings got some love from the customers, but a chicken wing didn't fare so well. Someone sent it back because it was raw. Pink and bloody! That's some nasty crap. This sent Chef Ramsay into orbit, and he called out the whole team, saving some special venom for Matt, who was about to get his balls pickled. Come here, you fucking prick. Yes, Chef. What the fuck are you doing? Yes, Chef. Sorry, Chef. Won't happen again. It was like watching someone go through a humiliating HR review. This gave Chef Ramsay the perfect opening to remind Matt of his tartar disaster of a signature dish, leaning in so close that Matt couldn't even blink. Yeah, I could do a lot you can chef. manage to fuck up raw food. No, I can't, Chef. Wake up! Yes, Chef! When Matt sent out a burger that looked like it had gone on a diet, Chef Ramsay was all over him, pointing out his blunder and wondering why he was firing burgers so early. Why are we cooking the burgers off so early on? They're like ice hockey parts. Catch, 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 there you go. Look, look, hey, there you go, up, up. Are we a fast food joint now? No, no chef. chef! Meanwhile, Bobby was stepping up big time, sending out entrees that actually impressed Chef Ramsay. So much so that Chef Ramsay said they were gold star worthy. And seeing some food finally making it out of the kitchen, decided to take a breather and gave Bobby and Matt a pat on the back. But Chef Ramsay wasn't having any of that. Ben, I can see from here. Glad it's all one big fucking jolly. He quickly reminded Ben that the guys still had six tickets hanging, while the women were down to only two. I have six tables on trace to go. They've got two tables to go. So, if I was you, I'd dig deep, touch your balls, and wake up. It's like that one time he told the red team, no need to wet your knickers when they were caught celebrating prematurely. Things were so bad that Chef Ramsay told the women to head over and bail the blue team out. He specifically sent Jen to help Ben. Jen, stand next to Chef Ben. Yes? All right. Cook with him. You could tell Ben was mortified by the whole thing. Chef Ramsay, of course, didn't miss the chance to school Ben for kicking back and handing out congratulations like they'd already won the night. To top it off, take a look at what happened. Let's give a big round of applause to the captain hit an iceberg on the fucking Titanic. That was a gut punch. During the seventh dinner service, Ben was stationed at the meat station. When the first ticket came in, Ben didn't even flinch. Chef Ramsay, ever the perfectionist, took him to task saying, yeah. No answer from fucking laid back Ben. He's more laid back than the dining board. After that wake up call, Ben finally started to respond, and Chef Ramsay, with a touch of sarcasm, decided to dub him Chef Ben. Again. Things didn't improve much, though. Ben sent undercooked chicken to the pass, prompting another lecture from Chef Ramsay. He used the moment to stress the importance of communication to the whole team. 
Ben tried to excuse his mistakes by saying he wasn't used to the brigade system, which only earned him another round of Chef Ramsay's scolding. Do you know what? Hey, what's up? You are so fucking sad. Hey, every time I ask you something, you give me the limpest excuse. You know that? I'm just Chef Ramsay's disbelief was palpable as he once again hammered Ben for being too relaxed, like he was stuck in a permanent state of vacation mode. You're one of the most fucking saddest I've ever met in the fucking kitchen. It takes a little time. I can't get used to this. Sounds like a fucking weirdo on Dr. Phil. Later, Chef Ramsay asked Ben how much longer it would take for two Wellingtons to be ready. Ben replied vaguely, saying he had two Wellingtons, but didn't specify their status. When Chef Ramsay pressed him again about which ones were done, here's what Chef Ben said. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Which one is ready? There is nothing ready on that ticket yet. Oh, Chef Ben. You surprised me. You surprised me how cheap you are. Of course, Ramsay wasn't thrilled with that answer. Ben then asked for six more minutes, which only confused Ramsay further. Things got worse when some of Ben's Wellingtons came back undercooked. Chef Ramsay lost it. Now look at it then! Schmuck! Jack! He scolded Ben for not taking the competition seriously, and in his final burst of anger, shut down the kitchen, calling Ben a dick in the process, and sarcastically congratulating him. You're not sending any more shit out of here. You sent enough. Take it easy. You deserve it. You've had a hard night. Are we done? Because if we're not, I'm going to complete my station tonight, Chef. He was eliminated that episode, and Chef Ramsay's end quote was absolutely brutal. Ben left a manual labor job, shoveling ditches to get back into cooking, but all he did in Hell's Kitchen was dig himself into a hole. For season five, I wanted to talk about Lacey, but she gets a lot of screen time on my channel, and today, I want to talk about someone who got lucky only through connections thanks to his wealthy background. It's Seth. I never butchered a, a filet before, so. Congratulations, you just have. Thank you, yes. Hey, 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 smart ass. Not in the right way, you fucking bozo. Yes, sir. In the signature dish challenge, he made lamb chops with ratatouille. How come the aubergine's so sweet? There is some honey. Uh, honey in a ratatouille? Not normal. It was bad, but Seth didn't care. He had what you'd call the rich kid syndrome. Uh, is that normal? No chef. No chef. That's the worst dish I've ever tasted. <laughs> but Chef Ramsay wasn't going to take it lying down. He made it clear that. 15 years to cook that shit, and you're laughing. You can make history on being the fastest exit in Hell's Kitchen. In the first service, Seth sent up his lamb, but sous chef Scott quickly flagged the issue to Chef Ramsay. The lamb had been sliced while still raw, then seared, leaving the chops mangled. Why is it all fucking mangled? Because he didn't have it ready, and then he sliced it and seared all the chops. Hey, Forrest, come here, you. Chef Ramsay didn't hold back, letting Seth know exactly how badly he messed up. Ramsay keeps calling me Forrest, as in Forrest Gump. I think it's a great name. Yeah, it is not exactly a term of endearment to giggle about. Seth was royally screwed. He didn't cook it properly temperature-wise, so he decided to buckle it and bastardize it. But Seth didn't take it seriously. He delusionally believed... Listen, I screwed up the lamb, but uh, at the end of service, Gordon and I will be like peas and carrots once again. Seth, I know the show's got hell in its title, but it wasn't Dante's Divine Comedy, bro. Anyway, that's a wrap on today's video. Do you agree with my picks? Who else would you add to the list? Don't forget to let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And hey, while I truly believe these chefs had no business being on the show, the contestants in this next video were either bullied or just weren't treated right. Trust me, some of these picks are really interesting and you wouldn't want to miss it.